All right, so now I've got the shadows underneath him in all these various ways. And if you want to group those together, it's not a bad idea because I have all these separate layers I worked with to, to get, get the shadows what I, the way I wanted. So I'll, I'll select all of those by holding down Command, clicking each layer until it's gray, even my overlay layer. And then I can try Command E to merge them, but the problem is that's going to get rid of the layer styles. So instead, we're just going to group them. We're going to click on the folder icon, and we're going to call this the shadow group. Right? That way, we can just turn it off and on. And that way, this is the amazing thing, even though they're separate layers, even with different uh, settings like, like multiply or overlay, I can still dim them, dim their opacity all together without much effort. Because <laughs> like I said, we tend to overdo things. So it's nice to be able to back it up a little bit. Okay, now what about the highlights on the creature? What if I want him kind of to have um, breath coming up and affecting the background? Well, we can do that as well. I can actually do that right on this adjustment layer. So let me put it on normal mode just so you can see what it looks like. And now instead of using burn, I'm going to use dodge. And I'm going to affect the midtones, and I'm going to give him some breath. It's basically, it's not painting, it's not adding my own pixels, it's just lightening the gray pixels that are there. <laughs> kind of cheating, but this is what compositing is. I'm going to overdo it just to show you. And then if I set it to overlay, what that does is it kind of brightens around him a little bit, which is helpful. I want to do that a little bit more to the background, maybe brighten this tip. It kind of brings things a little bit closer to the foreground. I think that was too much though. Now, I've got a fun little detail here. And it's one of the reasons I positioned him this way. Because he's over the water, though know, it's right at the bottom of the composition, it would make sense that he's going to have a reflection. Right. And I'm actually going to show you something so that I can dodge and burn on him with impunity and not worry about it affecting the background. I'm going to create a new layer above my creature that I fill with gray, a new overlay layer, set it to overlay. Actually, before I set to overlay, just so you can see what I'm doing. Then I'm going to go to my smart layer. I'm going to use the magic wand with contiguous turned off and select the empty space. So I get a perfect cutout of my creature. And then I'm going to go to my overlay layer, my new one, and then delete all of that. So I have a perfect, what is called a layer mask, a perfect mask of 50% gray on top of my creature. Then deselect, then set it to overlay. And as long as I only dodge and burn on this, I won't be able to affect anything other than the creature. So how can I burn the bottom of his chin without also burning the environment? Well, I do it on this now masked overlay layer. There we go. And I overdid it a little bit so I can take the opacity down. All right, now this sets me up to have a reflection. Now this is fun. I love doing reflections, but it's easy to get carried away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select his head from the smart layer, duplicate it, then transform it and flip it vertically, like a mirror image, right? But then I have to move it down. 
and it's only going to touch or be close to what it's reflecting right where <laughs> it's like a, a foot touching the ground right where the the thing that it's reflecting is touching the reflective surface right so if you touch a mirror with your hand your reflection is touching itself but as soon as you move that away so if he's like one inch from the surface which is what he kind of looks like then his his reflection is going to be two inches from him right because it's one inch until you get to the reflective surface and then it's another inch so that's about as much reflection as i would have but the water surface also affects the reflection. So now I'm going to take the opacity down of that reflection. I might even choose to use a layer style like um, pin light. That's too strong. Or soft light. That's too soft. <laughs> or just lighten. I'll keep it at normal. But the other thing I'll probably do is blur it a little bit but maybe not that much. So go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, the only filter we use. Blur it a tiny bit to make it look like it's moving. And then there's a little tool. Well, I'll just use the warp tool. There's a smudge tool you can use to kind of shift it and kind of show the stripes of the water. I guess I'll show it to you. We'll be using it on the next project a little bit. So it's under, it's all right on top of the dodge and burn tool called the smudge tool. But you got to use it very sparingly and you just kind of push and pull pixels. And kind of squeeze them. And then I'm going to erase away from the edges. At low opacity. And let some of those shadows come through as well. So that's how you can hint at reflections. And it's very subtle. Let's see. I want more of those shadows underneath to come through. I'm going to take the opacity down a little bit more. And just erase out where these shadows in the water are. Yeah. But those are the little details that can really sell it. All right? Other little things you might think about adding in. Really look at where the feet are touching. And you see how I've got this grass texture around? can find that layer. I'm going to take a clump of that. Duplicate it, move it above my creature, right? And then erase away from it. This time with a pretty sharp eraser at a pretty high opacity. So I can show those branches kind of going in front of the claws. And that really kind of sinks him into that environment in a more believable way. Back here, same thing. This is more because I didn't cut out as well as I could have. I'm going to take some of this background stuff, this rock, see from this background layer, duplicate it, push it up above, and then erase it out. And it can help to take the opacity down so you can see what to erase. And you don't always need to leave the edges super sharp either.
All right. So now what else can I do? Well, I've got this cut out. I burned him a little bit there. These highlights feel a little strong, so maybe I'll burn those overall. And maybe I'll just um, yeah, hit the midtones a little bit. I like how the ears are standing out a lot better now. But then also burn down the highlights a little bit. And the other way to do that, make a duplicate of my overlay layer and just set it to multiply, right? And then erase away from that. With a big soft brush. Pressure sensitive to size. I like using the tablet for that reason. In fact, I'll do it at a lower opacity so I can really create what the lighting is. Because where I erase allows the highlights to come through. It's only ever going to affect my creature. Notice how it doesn't affect the background. because it's on a separate layer. I can always just dim its overall opacity, find the right level. Basically ask myself, does that help? And yeah, I think it does. So saving my progress as I go. Last step are texture fills. I've got the shadows, I've got the highlights, I've got reflections. So these are the existing texture fills. They're already helping. There is one that, yeah, this one that I didn't use, but I can see if that helps. And I can try pushing that above. I just think it's too green. So maybe I'm going to play with its overall um, color balance just to fit the scene. Take away a lot of that green. But it's a way of kind of glazing things together a little bit. Helping the colors to work. Let's adding a little bit more purple into the scene. Yeah, I think that helps. If you need more, you can always duplicate it. I'm going to flip it, move it up. So I have some of it in the sky. It looks, you know, very swampy and kind of stormy. I have to make sure I lined it up correctly. And you see how that kind of overall coloring helps everything to come together. And I can always play with the opacity of them as well. A little bit more somber. The other thing you might do with texture fills is erase away from them where there's focal points you want. Because texture fills are made to obscure. So for his, his head, there's focal points I want. 